Hello folks, welcome back. Pastor Bob from Place of Refuge. The title I have today is Your Oil and Money. We're going to be in Matthew 25 to start with, verses 1 through 13. All right, I'm going to look to the computer here. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, Say, Not so lest there be none enough for us in you. But go ye there rather to them that sell and buy for yourself. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they were ready. Those that were ready went in with him and to the marriage, and the door was shut. And afterward they also, the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, you need, you need <laughs> watch your, Excuse me. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Now this is this is quite a powerful little story. And then if we have time, which we'll be into talking about the talents too. Well, when you give a parable, and this one was what? Likened unto the kingdom of God. So we're talking about the kingdom. That's his dominion, you know, his rule. It's it's used here to refer to the Messiah. Okay, his royal power and kingship. And I'm sure you probably knew that. But, but it's likened, or there's a comparison to ten virgins. All right, now, that means it's a marriageable maiden. A lot of this is obvious. A woman who has never had sexual intercourse with a man. But it also means a man who has abstained from all uncleanness and whoredom from idolatry and kept his chastity as well. But in this case, we're talking about virgins. All right? I would say it was probably more in likened unto the church. All right. They gave, they had lamps, and those were a torch or a lamp, the flame of which was fed by what? Oil. Not, went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five of them were foolish. Now, um, I'm going to refer back to this, so keep this in mind when I give you the interpretation. Wise is the intelligent, prudent, mindful of one interest one's interest and sensible all right foolish here believe it or not the word is morris which means impious they're godless and it does mean this stupid and silly and this is taken from an english word what we know as moron which means a foolish or stupid person all right so here we go and they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them now, the oil is olive oil in this case, or obviously fuel for the lamp. That's a gift. But also, it was used, oil was used for commerce, right? It was valuable. But oil in the scripture, I'm sure most of you know this, does represent what? The Holy Spirit. And there are even those today trying to build God's church without the leading of the Holy Spirit. It's carnal motivation. On the surface, it looks really good. Wow, that looks good. But there's no oil, if you will and in this you know and so there's a lot of churches out there trying to do good but they're doing it in their own strength in their own ideas and not being led by the spirit which is very very important romans 18 or excuse me 8 14 says for as many are led by the spirit what of god they are the sons of god amen now verse 4 but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Now the wise were the prudent ones, remember, the intelligent, sensible, and mindful of one one's interest. The wise depict those who were the mindful of their interest and readiness for what? The future. And remember, we're talking about the kingdom of God. This is Luke 12, 35. A little side scripture. Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. Glory to God. All right, verse 5. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. All right. Now, slumbered here, it means to nod to sleep. To sleep and to be overcome with oppressed with sleep. And here's believed that they just nodded off. And that's the Greek word study that I have. They just nodded off. Nothing wrong with that. 
And, but the word means to be also negligent and careless, to linger, delay in the Strong's, but it really means nodding off. So it it's, depends on how it's applied. Here it just simply means nodded off, all right? And they slept. Not a bad thing to fall asleep, to be fast asleep. However, it's the condition of these people. All right, now here we go at midnight. There was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Now we have an account of judgment falling at midnight somewhere else, don't we? I'm not saying Christ is coming back at midnight. Understand that. But we do have this talking about midnight. And in the book of Exodus, this is 11, 4, and 5. Okay? Chapter 11, verses 4 and 5. And Moses said, Thus says the Lord about midnight, Will I go out in the midst of Egypt? And most of you probably know the story. And all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sitteth upon the throne, even unto the firstborn of the maidservant that is behind the mill, and the firstborn of the beast. So we do have a couple of counts of midnight. Again, I'm not saying Christ coming back at midnight. The, the point is to be ready. All right, here we go. Then all the virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. Well, trimmed is, you know, they just... Turn, turn them on. In verse 8, And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for the lamps are gone out. Now let me insert the Greek interpretation of the foolish and wise. This is why I kind of belabored the point a little bit here. And hear how absurd it really sounds. And the impious and the godless said unto the intelligent and prudent, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Now, let me even paraphrase this. Now, I'm, I'm only doing this for um, illustration purposes, okay? That's all. And it says, so here it is. And the impious and the godless said unto the intelligent and proven, Give us of your Holy Spirit, for our flame and our lamps are gone out. Now, again, I'm only using that for illustration purposes. You know, I know it sounds absurd, but you really got to think, are we really ready for the bridegroom to come back? I hope so. We all need to be ready. It's not kind of like, um, you know, well, we'll put it off later. No, you need to walk worthy today. All right, we'll get into that in a little bit. Verse 9. But the wise answered and said, Not so. Why? Lest there be not enough for us and you, but go rather to them and sell and go for yourself. So what we're looking for here is what? Personal responsibility and personal relationship, which is very important. You and I need a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Romans 14, 12, another side scripture. So then everyone shall give an account of himself to who? God. We all will. Verse 10. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they were already went in with him to the marriage, hallelujah, and the door was shut. All right, the marriage, here's a wedding banquet, a wedding feast, a wedding or marriage festival. You guys know where I'm going with this. Revelation 19, 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. Why? For the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready. Amen? So let me put this word in here, what it really is too. And this is, this is good. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb has come and his church has made herself ready. Amen to that. Okay. They that were ready, they were ready at hand. They were, um, they had the oppor they took the opportune time. They were in the season, amen. And they received, they were ready to receive one coming. That's what that means. So they were ready at hand. They went into the marriage and the wedding banquet and a wedding feast. Now here is the scary part. And the door was shut. All right. The door of the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a palace. It denotes the conditions which must be complied with in order to receive into what? The kingdom of God. You and I have to comply with what God says in the word to accept him as our Lord and Savior. All roads do not lead to Jesus Christ. Everybody said, oh, that all these religions are all going to come together, all going to heaven. No, that's not true. You have to have a relationship with Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one. There's no advocate between him and the Father, only Jesus Christ. Okay, so the door was shut. And that, so the entrance was obstructed. In the Greek, it means to obstruct the entrance into the kingdom of God. The door was closed. What does that mean? There's a lost opportunity, <laughs> a big-time loss of 
opportunity. Why? Because they were indifferent and negligent to what? Their salvation. They were indifferent towards it. Revelation 3, 7, another side scripture. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, a whole different story, but you, you'll get the drift of it. Right under these things that say it, that his holy, he that is true, he that has the key of David, here it is. He that opened it, no man shutteth, and shutteth, no man openeth. When it's a done deal, my friends, it's a done deal. Okay? The door being shut is a very sobering depiction of a place of what? No hope, no kindness, no salvation. It's over. It's the most dangerous place that anyone can be by putting off salvation. Well, I'll do it on my deathbed. I'll do it here and I'll do it there. Folks, you probably heard this a gazillion times if you've been into church. You may not have that opportunity. When I was a young man, I got hit head on on a motorcycle, okay? I could have lost my life then, and believe me, I wasn't ready to meet the Lord. Thank God for his mercy, and that was many, many years ago. But you may not have time. I want to share a story with, there's a church member that I have that asked me to come with her, a family friend, and it was midweek, and I was busy, and I thought, you know, maybe I could do it Sunday, and the Lord said, no, go today. So I did. And you know what? The guy was receptive. I led him to the Lord, and just a few hours later, he was gone. Now, see, I want to miss that opportunity today. Amen? Today. Let me read this scripture to you. 2 Corinthians 6, 2. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted in the day of salvation. I have, I have secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Right now, this second, when you're watching. If you're not saved, Please, I, I beg you to accept the Lord as your Lord and Savior. Verse, you know, so I've heard, I don't, I don't want to move on here. I want, to, I want to go, or excuse me, go back. I don't want to go back to that. So, you know, how do we get to heaven? How do we get to heaven? You simply acknowledge that you're a sinner. Amen. You ask Christ to forgive your sins. Ask, invite him to come into your life, to be Lord of your life. Amen. And tell him you will serve him for the rest of your life. Amen. Admit you're a sinner. We all are. You know, ask him to forgive you. Invite him into your heart and be Lord of your life. If you pray that, you're going to be saved. Amen. Get into the word. All right. Now, so let's go back to uh, Matthew 25. And so, verse 11, Afterwards came all the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. What a scary word. No, you means I don't perceive you not. I don't discern you. I, I, don't, I don't see you. I don't know you. Then it says this. Watch, therefore, for ye neither know the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Watch. Now listen, we all need to watch. That means we need to give strict attention to and be cautious and, may I submit, active. We need to be active. Take heed lest through remission and indolence some destructing calamity Suddenly she'll overtake one. That's what it means. The general attitude of alertness in the past is the part of the Christian to be ready. That's all it is. And, you know, you need to be ready. Proverbs, or not Proverbs, pardon me, uh, Revelation 16, 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth, and keep his garments lest, lest he walk and make a thing. They see shame. Walk naked, excuse me. They walk naked, and they see his Shame. Now watch here is the same Greek word as Matthew 25, 13, that we need to you know, give strict attention to, to be cautious, take heed, lest through remission and indolence some destructive calamity suddenly overtake us. Be ready. Do not put off. Do not put it off. And it says, and keepeth their garments. That means attend carefully and take care of. Now the garments here, it does mean a cloak and a mantle. It does. And it's used here, as I understand it, it goes along with watchfulness. Keep yourself pure in morality and faithfulness to Christ. See, a watchman needed to keep his watch and not be found sleeping. And I read a little bit on this, and a brother made this comment. If they found him sleeping on a guard or something like that, they took his clothing. They took that thing, and he walked naked. Everybody knew, wow, he blew it. Amen? He wasn't ready. You need to be ready. Now, I want to get into another a parable. It's in the same book, and this is Matthew uh, 14 on through, I think, 30. We're going to look at it. 
So I'm going to read to the left here. This is the parable of the talents. This is where it's really money. That's why I said your oil and your lamps and your money in the beginning. For the kingdom of heaven is a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. Notice who goods it is. Verse 15. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To every man according to his what? Several ability. And straightway he took his journey. Then he that received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them another five talents. And likewise he that received two, he also gained other two. But he had received one, went and digged in the earth and hid it in his Lord's money. And after a long time the Lord of the servants cometh and reckoned on with them. All right, and it's here's verse 20. And so he that had five talents came and brought the other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I've gained besides them five talents more. Hallelujah. Verse 21. And the Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee what? Ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of thy Lord. Verse 22. He also had received two talents, came and said, Lord, thou hast delivered unto me two talents, and behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. And his Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I not sowed, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore have put my money into the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received my own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it to the one who has ten talents. For to every one that has shall be given, and he that hath an abundance, but from him that hath it not shall be taken away, even that which he hath. And cast the unprofitable servant where, into outer darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now isn't that scary? Let's go back to the verse 14 here. The king of is a man, okay? So we have his, his servants and his own goods is who it is. They were his goods, and he gave them. Another he gave five. Now, the talents here in the Greek means a scale of balance or a sum of money in this particular um, story. According to, now notice this, according to his, what? Several ability. It means pertaining to oneself, one's own. Each and every one of them had it. The ability is according to one's own dunamis. It's like his own strength, his own power, ability, capable, spirit of strength. It would appear, based on the Greek here, that they all had some sort of ability. Keep that in mind. Then he who had received five talents went and traded with the same. And that word traded means he made gains by trading to do business. He earned by working. He worked it to deal. All right? It translated as a work in other scriptures where the word says traded. It's translated in other places in there as work. So that's what he did. Verse 17. And likewise, he had received two. He also gained. Other two. Now the word gain here means to gain in profit or acquire. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. Now that word means to hide, concealing, keep secret, and not to reveal, not to reveal the Lord's money. Okay, so that could be silver money or shekel. That's what money in general here. And after a long time of those servants cometh and reckoneth with him. May I submit to you, I don't know how old you are, but obviously Christ hasn't come back in our day. It seems like a long time, but a day is a thousand years, and a thousand years is a day, so we don't know when he's going to come back. But may I submit to you, again, I don't mean to be redundant, but we need to be ready. Okay? So after a long time, the Lord's servants cometh, and reckon with him. Now that word reckon means he's going to cast up or settle accounts. To take up as an, as an account with somebody for adjustment to reckon or compute. And so, uh, that they received five talents, came and brought another five, saying, Lord, there are delivers unto me five. Behold, I have gained uh, another five. Praise the Lord. Gain here is the same word as the one who had two. So in other words, he traded 
he did his commerce and he did it. And his Lord said unto him, what? Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee what? Ruler over many things. Amen. Enter into the joy of thy Lord. Listen, folks. This is something that's a, it's a principle with God. When you get saved, God wants to use you. But he won't catapult you into greatness. He wants you to be faithful in little things. And if he does, he will have, you will have much more responsibility as it gains. If somebody asks me about my ministry, how could you sum it up? I was just faithful in little things. I just started a Bible study, and it grew from there. I had no idea I'd be a pastor, but that's how God worked it out. And he'll do the same for you. Verse 21. And his Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. That word well done means he was a, it was a commendation. It was well done. Ruler. Set one over a thing. Charge of it. This person's going to have charge over something. And the joy of the Lord, the gladness, who are, who are one's joy. Are you one, are God's joy? Yes, you are. He wants you to be faithful. Verse 22. He that also had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents besides. Okay, you guys know how it's going. And the Lord said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of thy Lord. The ruler is the same words, verse 21. Set over a thing and a charge of many things. Means large. All right, then we come down. Then he which had received the one talent. This is really the crux of the story for the most part. Came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. The hard man means, I knew you were harsh, rough, stern, or severe. Well, and then it says, I was afraid. And went and hid thy talent in the earth, and lo, there thou hast that is thine. I was afraid. I was struck with fear. I was seized with alarm to do something for fear of harm. Listen, fear keeps us a lot back. We're, you know, our nation's in a lot of fear now. We got the we got this vaccine thing, we got all this sickness, and, you know, it's just craziness, and so fear, but God has not given us the spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind, amen, so I was afraid, I was struck with fear, and I was seized, and his Lord said unto him, thou wicked and slothful servant, thou, has, thou knewest that I reap when I not sow, and gather what I have not strawed, that means, that word straw means to scatter abroad and disperse and winnow, he just threw it, and what did he, what did he call him, my friends? He called him wicked and slothful. What's wicked mean? Bad, bringing toils, annoyances, causing pain and trouble, and slothful. They were sluggish and backward. So the wicked and the slothful servant buried his future. Think about that. He buried his future. He really buried what would have blessed him in the future. Amen. And he hid himself. No one to blame but who? Himself. It's a personal relationship. We'll all be judged. Amen. Thou oughtest, thou uh, should have took my money in exchange, and then at my coming, I should have had received, you know, my own with usury, or it just simply means interest. That's what it was. And then it says this. Take, therefore, the talent from him, and give it unto him which has ten talents. For unto everyone that has shall be given, and he that shall have an abundance from him that shall have not shall be taken away even that which he has. Now, the, here's, this, here's a scary one. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, let me insert what the Greek said. Cast ye the useless, good-for-nothing servant into darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The unprofitable means useless and good for nothing in the strong. Look it up. So you and I will be judged someday, my friends. And my heart for all of you and for myself, we need to watch. And I want to hear, and I want you to hear the same thing. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. Enter into the joy of the Lord. You have your lamps trimmed, make sure there's oil in there. Amen. And if God has given you something, don't bury it because it will be on you and only you. Don't listen to other people. Oh, there's a lot of work. There's this thing. Listen.
To serve God, it's busy, and it can be hard sometimes, but may I submit to you, it is going to be the most rewarding thing that you'll ever do in your life. Believe me, will it be easy? No. But is it rewarding? Yes. Let's pray. Father, thank you for these wonderful people. Father, we need oil. We need to be faithful with what you've given us. I pray you bless these folks, and I pray, Father, this message minister to them to encourage them to keep going and not give up. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, my friends. I'll see you next week.